good morning, Transit! Good morning! Man, hey, uh, if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Kevin, and I'm super excited to be here with y'all. Um, this area right here, I was watching from backstage, ton of energy in worship. Y'all were awesome. Wow, great job. Uh, hey, if it is your very first time with us here in transit this morning, we are so glad that you chose to spend Sunday morning with us. We hope that you have an awesome morning and that you feel welcome and that you make some friends and you come back and see us again soon. Uh, and we, I'm so excited to be here because I am doing the first half of a two-part series we're kicking off today called Give, Serve, Love. And this is really a part of a bigger thing that our whole church participates in called Be Rich. And the idea of Be Rich doesn't come from the idea of us being rich, but comes from a, a verse where Paul writes um, to his friend Timothy where he says that he, to tell people to be rich in good deeds. Uh, and so this is a season across our entire church where we try to live that out through um, the way that we donate to local communities and serve in our local community as well. And there's ways that even you, if you wanted to, can, can sign up with your family to serve somebody over the next month or two as part of this Be Rich initiative that we do. Uh, and so here in Transit, our, our part of that we're doing right now is this Give, Serve, Love series. And we're going to have something fun for you all to do in a couple weeks to support that as well. Uh, but today I want to talk to you a little bit about the idea of being generous, right? Being of uh, generosity. And a lot of times when we think about generosity, we, we really think about one thing most of the time, right? We think about giving what? Money, right. We think about giving money a lot of times. When we think of somebody who's generous, we think of somebody who you know, gives a lot to charities or maybe they give a lot to the church or, or they, they pay for the person behind them in the drive through or things like that. It's all, a lot of times we can think of generosity tied really closely to money. And when we do that, for, for y'all as middle schoolers, it can be really easy for y'all to be like, well, I, I can't really be generous. I don't really have much money of my own that I can give. I don't have much money to, to do anything with that, and so it's hard for me to be generous. But the truth is that there are a lot of different ways and a lot of different things that we can be generous with. I mean, we can be generous with our time and how we give of our time to people. Maybe you have a special talent or skill or, or there's a subject that you're really good in at school. You can be generous with that and how you share it with other people. Maybe there's a sport or an activity that you are really good at and you can be generous with that. Maybe... You could even be generous with your words, right? Be generous with your words and how you speak to other people and how you speak about other people when they're not around. In fact, you can go so far as to say you can even be generous with your thoughts. Like when somebody does something to you or when, when something happens that maybe you, you can't explain or gets you frustrated or upset or it can be really easy to want to point a finger at somebody and judge them or, or be critical of them. You could be generous with your thoughts and choose in your own mind to provide a more generous explanation for what they did or for, or for the circumstance that you're in or for whatever happened. And so there's a lot of different ways that we can actually be generous and it's not something that you have to wait until you get to a certain age. It's not something you have to wait until you're older or have more money or anything to do because really all that being generous is, is being generous is giving freely to someone else without any expectation in return. It's being willing to, be, to give freely to somebody else of whatever it is that you have without expecting you to get anything back in return. That, that's the whole idea around being generous. And I want to tell you a story um, from my life of a time when people were really generous to me and it had nothing to do with money and there was no money involved at all. And it was when I was a little bit older than y'all. You see, when I grew up my whole life, I played football. Uh, I went to a small private school and I played football um, as early as we could in, in sixth grade, tackle football all the way through my senior year. And as I was getting ready to go into high school in my ninth grade year, there were a lot of changes at the school. And we had a new coach and a new um, staff that was there and, and all this different stuff. And so this, I was getting ready for football. It was the summer before my ninth grade year. And this new coach had instituted this thing, a football camp, where we were doing something called three-a-days. Now, I don't know if y'all have, have anything like that, and I don't even know, those might not even be allowed anymore, but what a three-a-day was for us back then was we would get up and we'd come out to the field long before the sun ever came up, early in the morning uh, in July, and this was in Florida, I grew up in Florida, so it's, it's, it's hot all the time, but we'd go out early in the morning, the lights are on out of the field, and we'd get a full like two hour practice in. And then after that practice, we'd go into the school, into the cafeteria, and we would have, lunch, uh, have breakfast together as a team. And we'd have breakfast together as a team. Then we'd go into the locker room and into a classroom. And we would do some, some work on the chalkboard, learning our plays, learning the offense and the defense. And then in the mid-morning, we'd go back outside. And we'd have another like hour and a half, two hour 
practice. And then we'd come in and we'd have lunch together inside the school. And, and we'd do that and we'd do some more work inside. And, and yep, we'd go out for another outdoor practice in the afternoon for another hour and a half, two hours. So it's three separate practices in one day. And we did this for two weeks. And the, after the first day, I'm telling you, I was ready to quit. I was, I was like, oh my goodness. We had this thing. Uh, has anyone ever done bear crawls before? Um, yeah, bear crawls. Well, we had this giant dirt hill. It had to be 15, 20 feet high. And we would do bear crawls up the hill and we just called it bear crawl hill. And so it was just the most miserable thing. I remember going home after day one and being like, that's it. I am done. I'm done. I'm done with, I don't need to play football this bad. Like, I don't know what they think that we're like college athletes or NFL athletes or something, but this is too much. And I decided that's it. I didn't want to do it anymore. And so the next day, I just slept in. I, I didn't set my alarm. I wasn't going to go. I decided that, you know, I was done with football for this year. Uh, and I was like, this coach ain't going to last anyway, you know. So all of a sudden, I'm in bed, and I hear a knock at my door. And I, I'm like, I have no idea who it could be. I go to the door, and I open the door, and there's four of my teammates standing there at my front door. And you see, they had driven here. They're still in their practice clothes. They clearly had just done the morning practice. And they came... And I, as soon as I open the door, I'm like, I have no idea why they're here. And I felt all these feelings immediately before they even said anything at all. And I was like, there was like a shame that I felt that I, that I just didn't say anything and just skipped. There was a, a regret a little bit. There was some, some fear and, and nervousness of like, what are they going to say? In fact, there was, I had already begun to feel some defensiveness of like, hey, whatever they say, well, here's my argument and here's why I'm doing this. And, and so I felt all these feelings in that instant when I opened the door. And one of the guys who ended up being co-captains with later on in the football team in future years grew up with him my whole life. His name is Colt. And he stands at the door and he says, hey, man, we we're worried maybe you overslept or something and we didn't want you to miss out on practice and we want you out there with the team. And so we came to pick you up. Uh, and I was just dumbfounded. I was just in shock. I was like, well, um, what do I say back to that? And I couldn't believe it. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, man, if this is me on the other end of that, I'm like, dude, you are so lazy. What a quitter. Why did you do that? Where, where have you been? We've been working out here so hard. Um, and they didn't do any of that. So they were generous with me with their thoughts. They could have thought anything they wanted about me. And they were generous with me with their words and what they said to me because they could have said a lot of worse things. They were generous with their time. I mean, they decided instead of having breakfast together at the school, they were going to drive to my house, which is 15 minutes away, to come and get me and make sure that I was still a part of that team. And my coach was even generous. I didn't, I didn't get disciplined. I didn't get told, like, hey, man, you can't start the first game. You can't be on this team. Like, you got to no, know. He was like, hey, come on back in. We want to have you on the team. And I didn't realize it in that moment as I was a ninth grader getting ready to go into my ninth grade year. But looking back on it, I realized how incredibly generous these people were toward me in that moment. And there was no money involved. There was no money involved. But, but the thing is, it still cost them something. It cost them some of their time. It cost them maybe what they wanted to say to me, what they, what they wanted to think about me, or what they wanted to do to punish me. So it cost them something because the truth is, and it probably wasn't easy either. Because the truth is that being generous isn't always easy, and it always has a cost. When we are generous with our time, with our resources, um, with our money, with uh, our thoughts and our words, a lot of times it can be really hard. It's not always easy, and it's always going to come with some kind of a cost. But being generous, we know that it is so important, especially as followers of Jesus, because Jesus talks about it over and over again, and the scriptures talk about it over and over and over again. In fact, in Acts, there's just a few examples here. In Acts, the disciples quote Jesus as saying, it is better to give than to receive. In Proverbs, a long time before Jesus, they say that the generous will be blessed. In Luke, in Jesus' own words, he's telling a story, and he tells people that they should sell their possessions and give to the poor. That's how important generosity was to Jesus. And there's more. Paul talks about it later in a letter where he writes, you are enriched so that you can be generous. Basically saying, hey, the things that you have, the talents and the skills and the time and the money and the resources that you have been given, it's for the purpose of you to be able to be generous with others. And in Hebrews, the author says that being generous is something that pleases God. 
And so we know the scriptures talk about it over and over and over again. So if you're a person who's a follower of Jesus, we know that Jesus wants us to be generous. But why is it so important? You see, and I think Jesus gives us a clue about why that is in one of his last conversations with his disciples before he's crucified. Jesus is talking to them, and, and, and he's wrapping kind of his time up with them at first, and he says this. He says, a new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. Jesus is basically saying, hey, I, I'm about to be gone. My time with you is about to be over. And if I could just sum up everything I've been teaching you over these last three years, if I could sum up all the things that you've seen me do and all the things that you have gone and done in my name, then it would just be this. If you could leave here with one thing, it would be this one command to love one another. He even says, as I have loved you in the same way that I've loved you, with the servant heart that I've loved you with, with the way that I have given everything of myself to you, that's how you should love one another. And what is generosity? I mean, generosity is just our love for one another put into action. It's the idea that if we love people around us, if we love one another, we are going to do something about it. We are going to be generous towards those people with our time, with our money, with our resources, our talents, our skills, with our words, with our thoughts, and all of that. It's the idea that we can take that love for the people that we have around us and put it into action. But like we said at the beginning, it's going to cost something. Because being generous isn't always easy, and it always has a cost, but it's worth it. It's worth it. And Paul is writing the church of Corinth, and he tells us about this. He tells us about how worth it it is for us to be generous. And as he's writing, he does something kind of like what Jesus does. Jesus uses a lot of parables or analogies that his, uh, his uh, listeners would understand. Well, Paul does the same thing. He's writing this church in Corinth, and he talks about it from the perspective of like a farmer. And here's what he says. He says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And when he talks about sows, he's talking about sowing seed, putting seed out in order to grow crops, to grow food. And when he says reaps, he's talking about gathering a harvest, which would come way later in the season. But he's saying if you sow sparingly, then later on you are going to reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. He's saying what you do now, what you're willing to put out, is going to have an impact on what you get back in the future. And he connects this to giving with the next thing he says. He says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. In fact, Paul doesn't even give you a specific idea of what you should give or how much you should give. He's like, no, no, no. It's not about me setting an expectation. It's not about there being a rule of what you should do. You should decide in your heart what you're willing to give and he goes on and he says, here is the promise that you have with it. And God, he goes on and says, and God is able, go to the next one, um, to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Paul's basically saying, hey, if you are willing to be generous, or if you are willing to give of what you have in your time, and your resources, and your money, and your words, and your thoughts, then God is not going to leave you hanging. Because one day there is going to, time when, going to come a time when you are going to be in need of the generosity of others. And he's saying, what you sow, that is what you're going to reap. What you put out is what you're going to get back. And that if you are just willing to give up of yourself and be generous with the people around you, that you are still going to have everything you need. What he says there. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need. Because God is not going to leave you hanging if you are generous with what you have. And so the question is, in, in middle school, how do we put this into practice? What do we do with this? How do we take it and go apply it into our lives? And it's really just three simple steps. The first is this. You get to take inventory. We've got to take inventory of what we have that could be of benefit to other people around us. Maybe there's a subject that you are really good at and you know that there's some people that struggle with it in your class. Maybe there's something you, you, you're really, really good at a sport and you're like, man, I've worked at this so hard my whole life and I'm really, really good. And you could probably spend some time teaching some other people and spending time investing and being generous with those skills. 
There's a lot of different areas that, that maybe you could find ways to be generous with people. So the next thing is we have to take that and then we have to decide to be generous. We have to decide to be generous with it. That, hey, whatever I've got, whatever I have that God's given me, we all have something that we can be generous with. We have to make the decision that we're going to be generous with it. And then we just have to find someone to give to. We have to find someone in our circle, someone um, in our family, at our school, on our team, in our club, that, that can benefit from what we have and that we are willing to be generous toward and give to them. And as you head to small group in just a minute, you're going to be talking about this and you're going to have a chance to um, talk about some practical ways that you can take and put this into practice in your lives. But as you do, I want you to go there and answer this question first. What is something that you have that could be a benefit to others? What is something that you have that could be a benefit to others? I'm going to go ahead and close and pray, and then we'll send you to small group. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much um, for these students, for each and every student in this room and their leaders, God. Uh, pray that you would just be with them as they had to have these conversations, that we would find ways this week to put our generosity, to put our love for others into action um, through being generous with our time, with our resources, with our words, and with whatever it is that you have given us, that you have enriched us with, I pray that we would be generous with it, God. Um, we thank you so much for each and every person here. Pray that you give them a great week and bring them back safely next week. And it's in your name, your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead and head off to small group, and we'll see you all back here next Sunday.